Welcome back to the stream. That was your BRB. And why not? Now you know how to fix your v uh, VCR heads and uh, oxide shit. So uh, this will be N64 prototypes. Luigi Blood uh, packaged a bunch of this stuff together. And it's just a number of things that are some very recently have been revealed. And some a little bit longer ago. But it's just prototypes for the N64. And I think you'll find some of this stuff very interesting. For example, why don't we start with the big one, or one of the big ones, Dinosaur Planet. We'll check it out for a little bit. Original Star Fox Adventures in the form of Dinosaur Planet on the N64. When this was revealed, I talked about maybe waiting until it was finished, like by modders. But Luigi Blood basically um, said it's, it's pretty much good to go. This was recently released by Forest of Illusion. Hang on a minute. Um, is there an option for this thing to keep running when I mouse out? Actually, probably doesn't. Oh, here we go. Got it. All right. Uh-oh. Looks like it crashed. Here we go. Recently released by Forest of Illusion, it contained protection, um, so it can be playable. This is the original N64 version of Star Fox Adventures by Rare. It was found in a disc from a Swedish collector. This build is dated December 1st, 2000, around when Rare dabbled on replacing Saber with Fox instead. Some of the voice lines are outright identical to the final game on GameCube. Most of the assets are still referring Saber. This game is mostly playable, but is quite prone to glitches. Without some cheats, it's pretty much impossible to progress on Cape Claw after you swap from Fox to Crystal. But you need quite some time to reach that point. So, um, I'm not planning on playing all of this. You know, I'm just gonna check out a little bit of it. You know, it's Sunday stream after all, but this was like kind of, um, a Holy Grail game. Because... Bingo! Uh, because people didn't necessarily love Star Fox Adventures. I thought it was okay. It was a decent game, and I, I would have loved to have seen Rare's original vision for Dinosaur Planet, just in its untainted, unstarfoxed form on the N64 as like a 2000 release, or even 2001, um, like around the same time as Conquer. Just to see what Rare's take on Zelda with dinosaurs would have been. I didn't hate Star Fox Adventures, I've had this discussion plenty of times. It's just a game I wouldn't want to revisit, necessarily. Is this Joanna Dark? It sounds just like Joanna Dark. same voice actress. Wasn't she just on the Rare staff? Like, she was a programmer, or uh, she worked on the games, and then they, they were like, hey, do you want to do the voice? Yeah. Oh, I'm playing. Oh. Well, weirdly enough, I mean, I don't remember Star Fox Adventures very mu very well, um, but this does have flight segments. I thought those were just, like, ham-fisted. Not ham-fisted, um, uh, uh sho sho shoehorned in. Of course, the, the main problem is the N64 frame rates for when things get a little too busy. Also, say what you will about Star Fox Adventures, for its time, I thought it mostly looked pretty good. It had some of the rare polish visually, where it looked very uh, visually 
uh, uh, appealing, uh, pleasing. I mean, Rare even tweeted that this leak happened. Like the Rare employee, not Rare, but like ex-Rare employees, they, they were probably happy to see some of this uh, online if they were talking about it. frame rates. Oof. Then again, Ocarina of Time had 20 FPS, but yet felt playable. It was a stable 20 FPS, that's true. But also, this isn't done- this wasn't done yet, so... Maybe they could have optimized it a little bit further. Baphomodads. Music sounds like what would maybe you would hear in Donkey Kong Island in DK64 as like the Kremlings invade. <laughs> General Scale, ruler, tyrant, and dictator of the Sharp Claw tribe. And who might you be, Animal Girl? My name is Crystal, and I've come for the princess. You seem a long way from home, Crystal. I can't believe the wizard asked a girl to do his dirty work. <laughs> <laughs> also, Rare really liked to make lizards the bad guys. Let's just say we had a nice little chat, and he's agreed to take a rest for a while. At least until I've taken over the planet. You coward scales! My mother will send an army against you! Ah yes, Princess Kai. Your mother. Once Find dinosaurs. Animal, then we'll pay your mother a visit. What the fuck That's is a Kremlin nice then? Try, but you have to kill me before you can save the princess. <laughs> Reptile. Fair enough. <laughs> Kermit adjacent, <laughs> if you say so. Oh. Ah, there's some uh, monkey business aboard this airship. I'm okay, I think. Now, how do we steer the ship? I just want to get to the part where Star Fox. Not Saber, but Fox himself shows up. I, I knew that the chat was going to become goblins upon hearing this music. Well, yeah, Turok, Donkey Kong. I hear the body harvest shring uh, samples. Sh 
shring. <laughs> yeah, I think I said shring. That looks really decent for N64. I mean, Rare was really good at utilizing hardware. But yeah, this this just goes on and on and on. They, they could have... I don't remember what Star Fox Adventures ended up being like, but... Uh, I wonder if the pace was a little faster. I, I do like that this airship has a dinosaur head that moves. Again, I don't remember Star Fox Adventures, so I have no idea if that happened in SFA. Probably did, but I think it's cool as fuck. That was in Adventures? Oh, okay. Now it sounds like Body Harvest music. <laughs> it's fucking N64 piano samples. I'll go and find the wizard. He'll get you out. When do you get to play as, um, Fox? F-A-U-X. Yeah. 1.5 hours in? Alright, never mind then. That's something that I probably will never see. About 15 minutes. Oh, okay. I, I skipped the tutorial because I was... I'm, I'm being stupid. Um, it said, lock on. Oh, there it is. I was pressing the wrong button to lock on the whole time. It's a warp podium. Then he save early and save often. Whoa, that noise. Kill. Kill me. Oh. Try not to move. The wizard will help you. He can't. Joanna Dark. Our king sent us here to protect him. <gasps> Scales. Context Here. sensitive. <sighs> wow. This guy is sick. Oh, that's a little bit depressing. <laughs> Christo. 
yeah, this needed some optimization. You know, obviously. Of course. Vinny, can you jump? No! Zelda puzzle. Never mind. Crystal. Crystal. <laughs> That's why they told me to save, huh? Wow. Oh, I guess I should have save stated. Like, actual save states, not the in-game save system. Well, again, chat. As cool as this is to see, the truth is I wasn't planning on playing a whole lot. That's why I'm doing this on a Sunday stream. Like, it's in a pack. It's cool. It exists. I'll probably just watch someone else's video about it, truthfully. Like, there's definitely someone who's gonna do a deep dive and really show off what this game has to offer. You ain't gonna be me. Um... But, uh, yeah, I mean, I'll check out a little bit of it. See, I had just placed the thing incorrectly. Randon? What happened to you? It was scales. But I'll be fine. And what... what about you? No need to worry about me. You taught me well. Did you rescue the princess? Yes. Did you she rescue the princess? The My dear. Dinosaur planet is in extreme danger. You must take this. Take this. This is my spell book. General Scales tore out most of the pages and cast them into the storm. Oh, I hope it makes that same sound effect. Well, they must be scattered all over the planet by now. If you find a page and have collected enough magic energy, you can use this spell. I'll look out for them, so you don't have to worry about Scales anymore. It's not scales I'm worried about. Lowercase scales. Let me tell you about the history of Dinosaur Planet. <laughs> when time was just beginning. Okay. A race known as the Krizoa ruled this world. Yes, thank you. And much of the universe. Though in a great battle, they and much of the universe were destroyed. And from this destruction came life. The dinosaur's god, the great Chimeria Dragon, created this world. And since that day, life has been good. At least until General Scales unleashed his army. A little, and little Connery. Something else. A little Scottish. When King Arthwalker discovered this sacred place and began to think the ancient texts were hiding something. Maybe the history of the planet was wrong. You must go to Discovery Falls. You'll find some answers there. But what about you? And how will I find this place? Not dead yet. As long as I stay here, then I'll be fine. 
The magic within this place is keeping me alive. Search this oh, chamber. Oh, the magic is, is keeping him alive. Use it to escape from the mountain. This will take you to a friend of mine. He'll direct you and the princess to Discovery Falls. Hang on. I will save. I'm just trying to figure out how to use the the shoot because the C buttons are weird here. I saved. How shoot? You use the C button. Yes, sword. There we go. There we go. There we go. Oh boy, the aiming. Look, spring. It's that fucking noise again. The stock sound effect. The old as dirt so stock sound effect. But yeah, I mean, it, it's, um, it is a game. It kind of, you know, controls like a Zelda game. But then again, so did Star Fox Adventures. It's, it's very similar to what I remember Star Fox Adventures was like. Yeah. So it wasn't like a complete overhaul. Can you do any rolls or side jumps like Zelda? Not that I can tell. Vinny, just go through the door. Just go through the door, forehead. What happens when you run out of magic? Another couple minutes. Uh, I don't really think. I, I kind of don't even know if I want to get to Fox. How how much longer until I get to Fox? Like I'm in. I'm very impatient and want to do the other. Vinny, you are very close. Okay, two minutes. Time to land the R wing. That explosion sound effect does not sound like what a jellyfish would make. I've been safe stating. Don't worry. How do you know that? Oh, I've pulped jellyfish. Oh, by the- by the millions.
You have to harvest their natural goo. It's a, it's a healing agent. Someone out there is going to believe that I've actually pulped jellyfish. I don't know, he said it! I mean, it probably happened. Jeez! Oh, this fucking guy's crazy! <laughs> An entire species of jellyfish went extinct because of this fucking guy! What? You don't like my voice? I'm just hitting puberty! Come on! Give me a break! Greetings, <laughs> Ranger! My name is Rubble, and I'm a swap stone. To swap to Saber's adventure, or go to Warlock Mountain, then come and visit me. I'll show you how my magic works. No, no wait! I've got to find Discovery Falls! You've got lots of time to do that. Let me show you how the swap works. Shrek Rock. Now, now, don't be scared. Crystal's friend Saber is on the other side of the planet. To oh yeah, that was a full crunch. You will have to guide both characters. To do this, you must visit me or my twin brother, Rocky. Do you understand? You talking to me? Good. Now let's swap to Saber. It's a very rare thing to do. I sure hope Randon's right about this place. If the prince doesn't turn up That's soon, him. I think I might freeze to death. Saber Fox Adventure. This is how Star Fox Adventure started. I think Fox landed in an R wing. Also, yeah, Fox didn't have a sword in Adventures, he had a staff. No, this is it. 20% into Fox is part of the game. Man. I am not qualified to tell you what happened in Star Fox Adventures at all. I remember none of it then. Jeez. I know he didn't have a sword. So at least there's that. Crystal doesn't get trapped for most of the game like she does in Dinosaur Planet either. Okay. That's, uh, that profile is Saber. I see it. This is still really cool, though, in its own way. Like, it is... This is a prototype pack. So the idea is, here's these games that... Either we never saw, or what they were like before they were released. The truth is... This is not a game I would play all the way through for our purposes. purposes. But instead, what I would rather do is watch someone else do it and talk about it. And... My- my whole thing about this is, it's really cool to see a rare Zelda game. 
right at the end of the N64's lifespan. Now, is that Fox's dialogue, or is that Saber's original uh, answer? Royal Knight of the Lilat System? Oh my god. The lighting is great. The textures and geometry, impressive for N64. Frame rates, shame rates. This reminds me of the section from Conker's Bad Fur Day. When you have to race the Ungas, and there's lava and stuff. God, this is painful to look at. This is why the N64 needed fog a lot of the time. I mean, again, before optimization, let's let's call it what it is. Um, game wasn't even released, but still. Chat, what would you say this is F like? This FPS is what ten? It's like ten frames a second, right? But don't worry, the human eye can't see FPS. 10 to 15. Was there always, like, technology <laughs> like that? It's a hot spring, or you'd be frozen by now. Why, you little... Hey, I wouldn't if I were you. My dad's a king Earthwalker, and he'll bash you up. I don't think he'll be doing any bashing. He's been captured. That's why I've been sent to rescue you. Is this Chris Seaver doing a Fox That's voice? Right. So stop moaning, and let's get you back to your home. No. <laughs> Kind of sounds a little bit like it. Oh. Steve Malpass? Who else? Same VA as Smash? Oh, okay. Well, now the frame rates are fantastic. Look at that. Perfectly smooth. And then I look there, and then gone. Pulped. Reduced to atoms. But man, could you imagine if the whole game ran this... Like, smooth, like that right there. Oh man, that would be so fucking cool. Actually, it did. It's called Star Fox Adventures. <laughs> Park. Cool music. Cool mushroom. This is- this is really cool. I like this a lot. Just from a historical standpoint. And, um... What they've managed to accomplish on the N64 yet again. This reminds me of Diddy Kong Racing's, like, uh... Towns, like little ice towns, the snow towns. Was those levels. Fight. 
I'm going to talk to strangers. This has got rare written all over it, for fuck's sake, these voices. The most interesting thing for me learning about Dinosaur Planet's leak was that Fox was ever even implemented on the N64 version at all. I thought they got the order to do a Star Fox game and then switch development directly to the GameCube game from there. Had no idea for years, many of us didn't, that there was ever an N64 version of Fox McCloud um, in Dinosaur Planet. Mental, chat, mental. But, uh... I'm gonna stop playing this now. It's really cool. It's really cool. Again, I'd recommend maybe checking it out yourself. Or doing, like, a little bit of research, maybe finding a video that covers more of the game. That music is really cool, though. Is this music in Star Fox Adventures? This particular track? It is. It's a little different, though. Digital Foundry did a really good video, and it includes dev interviews. Well, I know what I'll be watching. It sounds great. Well, that is Dinosaur Planet. one of the, uh, Holy Grail leaks. Why don't we check out Whack and Roll next? Let me just, uh, increase the frame size here so I can actually see what I'm looking at. So you may be thinking to yourself, what is Whack and Roll, and why is Vin allowed to show that on Twitch? It's Glover. Early Glover prototype. Let me read this to you. This is a prototype of Glover from before it got its final name. It was released by the right the rights holder at Pico Interactive. Is the earliest version found within the source code they have. It has no sound. Now, I've never really played more than a little bit of Glover, so I couldn't tell you what's different. But, um, you want me to make sounds? Wait, wrong sound. Hang on. Uh, Hmm. <laughs> that didn't take long. <laughs> hey, what what the fuck are you doing? I'm a ball, huh? I'm a ball in a glove. Did you just steal my ball? Am I funny to you? Like a carnival clown? <laughs> I don't know what just happened. Oh, 
Oh boy, this game was in rough shape at this time. As one would expect, of course, but... Damn. Someone just linked this. It's the Resident Evil Director's Cut DualShock OST Mansion Basement. I'm sure most of you knew that. But it does sound a bit like ball music. It's it's a little ballsy. Oh man. That's good fucking music. Where is Glover's face? Oh no, sorry. I gotta be honest, when I first heard about this game when I was real young, I thought it was Glover. Because I remember Danny Glover, the actor. I think someone, in my, maybe my cousin or one of my friends, called him Danny Glover. And so, for me, I always read Glover as Glover. Which, it's Danny Glover. It's not Danny Glover, it's Danny Glover. It's Donald Glover. Vinny, you said this before. I know, every episode is a repeat. I'm just saying, Vinny has many cousins he can blame things on. It's true, though, because one has to first get the knowledge to have it be wrong. And where does the knowledge come from? Italian cousins. That's the answer. Always. Here's one that you also may find interesting. This is The World Is Not Enough. Once the password menu appears, press the following left. Pretty early version of the game that was randomly found a development cartridge released by Forest of Illusion as well. Pretty early and stanky and honestly quite a bit of fun to watch and mess with. This game was very good. I liked this game. It wasn't quite Goldeneye, but it did a lot of its own cool stuff. Beginning insertion. The name's James Bond. James Bond. Um... What was that dude doing? I remember this level. Good frame rates, good resolution. You know, well, well. Crispy. It's crispy. This just royalty free, like Bond like music that they threw on loop for the early uh, demo of this. <laughs> it was smart that they went back to. Um, Tomorrow Never Dies was an anomaly, what they did. Like, they saw the success of Goldeneye, and they were like, hey, we'll do a third-person shooter. It's like, no, do what Goldeneye did, and just do it a little different and better, if you can. Oh my god. They got back on track with the Bond games, even if Rare didn't develop them. I think they did a pretty good job replicating some of that between this and Nightfire. Everything or Nothing is a good third-person uh, Bond game. Yeah, eventually they did it right. And then they even released a Sean Connery version of that.
I wonder if I can... I want to just check out... I want to check out a couple more levels real quick. Now that we've seen one level. Also, the controls are weird. Like, this isn't your usual modern first-person shooter controls. It's, um... I could rebind them, I suppose. Fuck. Reset. Left, left, right, right, left, left. Sorry, left, left, right, right, left. Memory expansion detected. Publisher logo one to be supplied. We can skip some of that. Um, select mission. Skiing chase. Caviar factory. Scottish castle inside. Street chase. MI6 London. I believe that was the first. I believe that's the first level. I can't wait to hear generic Bond spy music. Exactly. Those reflections, though. So the guns just don't exist. They're not real. I accidentally got rid of the music. Okay, this is like a way too early level. I'll check out two more levels. <laughs> is MI6 in the movie on the, the Thames River? Or, sorry, Thames? It's the Thames, right? Even though it's spelled T-H-A-M-E-S. Thames? Please don't say it like that. I'm not... I'm not fucking English. I don't fucking know how to pronounce your, your river, mate. <laughs> I don't know who your daffy pals are. <laughs> Vinny, aren't you a tiaboo, though? Yeah, sometimes. Vinny, that's not English. That was barely Scottish, either. <laughs> Oh my god. Oh god. <laughs> the enemies! Yeah, Bond is just a gun. He doesn't need to be anything more than a gun. If you think about it. Also, if you play these Bond games and think about how many people James Bond murders, just straight up murders, thousands, potentially thousands. You have a license to kill Bond, not a license to fucking massacre. Oh well, I guess you could say I left them Shaken, not stirred. <laughs> Bond, you are a dime a dozen. Indeed. And then he gets away with it. They have a laugh, they have some tea. Bond, like, you know, bends Money Penny over her desk, and that's it. And then there's no more problems. It's accurate. 
Have you not seen a Bond movie? Let's be real. Try multiplayer to see if they've added NPCs. Oh god, this... Oh, okay. Alright. Well... James, you destroyed an entire village. Takes one to know one, eh? M? Oh, Bond. You are hilarious. And then the movie ends and it goes. You rascal Bond! M, I've just come back from committing mass murder. And it's just that, everything, every time, every time, just, you know, just blowing up thousands of people. There's a joke. Then Pierce Brosnan looks at the camera, winks, and then the movie ends. Street Chase. Here we go. Final one. I want to see what this is like. I, I haven't played this game in a while either, so this is kind of like a trip down memory lane. Okay, loud invisible gun again. Here's the exciting Street Chase. <laughs> How would Mirror Universe Bond be like? Monk. Yeah, these, these controls are wacky. In order to strafe left, you have to use C-stick C -stick right. C-stick. I feel that right now. Alright, this wasn't really all that, like, there wasn't much here. Some of the enemies were kind of funny, but it was just very, very basic stuff. Um, Mario Artist Paint Studio. I'll check out a little bit of this. We need to configure graphics. So, it doesn't save across games. Both controller and mouse plugged in. How does one do that? How does one get the mouse in as well? I wonder. Um. This was found in a blue development disc in 2020. It is a build that dates around nine months before nine months before the final version you've played in the past. Most of the content is identical, mostly, um, but lacked polish. However, Nat Attack minigame is in this. I just need to figure out how to turn the mouse on. I've, I've uh, forgotten. Well, there he is. I may not have the card, but I have this crusty model from Pokemon Stadium. Boing! Hang on, um... You can also do Game Boy Camera. Rage Input to load your Game Boy Camera ROM save if you want to make use of it. Uh, nope.
No, I, that's too much setup. It, it, that would be a half hour of me figuring that out live on stream. And troubleshooting goes 10,000% worse when you're live on stream. Always. It's true. But yeah, I don't remember how to enable the mouse, so... I guess never mind that. But it says here... 2D paint mode in the fourth... Coffee break. Oh, cool! It's- oh, this- why'd they cut this? This is so cool! You got your art... ...on the wall? On a painting? There's- it's 3D... ...net attack! Uh, for those that don't know, Mario Party had a famous minigame where you use the mouse to swat gnats. Um... ...and it was the coffee cup. I guess, yeah. It was like kind of a famous little minigame. There's the 64DD, there's Mayro, there's Toad. That's awesome. Did I say Mario Party? I meant Mario Paint. <laughs> Sorry. So, I have a new problem. My 8-bit controller, the B button is sticking. I don't know how to unstick, uh, buttons. But it's been happening. Alcohol. I'll have to look it up, figure something out. Alcohol, cotton swab. I need to use controller gloves. This would be easier if I- if I had the mouse figured out, but... Crack it open, clean all the buttons with cotton swab and alcohol. Cool. Well, that was pretty cool. Um... Like, uh, there's- there's more. It says here... This version is a partial English translation that I have made. Luigi Blood did that. <laughs> but yeah, this Mario Paint stuff or Mario Paint Studio, or whatever this thing is. Uh, Mario Artist Paint Studio. Wow, I got it wrong a bunch. But it's... I already did a stream of this a while back. It's great. This is like one of the best things that I wish I had as a kid. Considering how much I enjoyed Mario Paint. I can also show you a little bit of, uh, Mars. I didn't get a chance to show you very much Planet Mars the last time I played this. And apparently it's almost exactly the same as the final version.
Oh, look, it's Linda. Hey, Linda. Mind ripping rail. That looks familiar. Why does that look familiar? Isn't that the alien makeout simulator? And then you can, um... I've done this before. But you can, uh... Yes, we want the stamp. How do we go back? Yeah, here, so... Again, way easier with a mouse, but uh, I've given up already. I just don't remember how to put stamps on these things. It does sound like Feliz Navidad a little bit. Should be a way to do this. Special effects, maybe? No. Luigi Blood is either watching this now or is going to watch this in the future and be screaming. Like, oh, all you have to do is click the thing. Well, I mean, I changed the color a, a little bit. Look, it's it's red and green now. And then you can explore, and you can like see your creations in the world. You take photos. It's really cool. You can visit your alien friends. Change the music. Not very Mars like music, but. I wonder if I can edit the terrain. Yeah, you can. I believe. Look at that. You can just fuck it right up. Graphics ruined. Absolutely ruined. in Nipinya under the sea. Yeah, that, that, uh... Oh boy. Oh boy, I've ruined the textures of this whole... This is no longer Mars. Welcome to Planet Vom. Free doggy bag with every, with every stay. I mean, the, the main appeal there for me 
was coffee cup. Got a couple more prototypes for you. Including Zelda. Zelda is here. Zelda is the one I'm most excited about. But this one is called Viewpoint 2064. It's an unreleased sequel to Viewpoint on the Neo Geo. Released by Gaming Alexandria on March 2020. It's a 3D shoot 'em up game. It was playable during Space World 99. It was advertised as a complete and ready uh, for release for nine, uh, November 1999, but it didn't quite happen. This build is also not really finished. It was delayed and then completely disappeared. Lost Media. Lost Colony. Wow, okay, Lost Colony, Lost Media. Decent little 3D shmup. Can't really aim up. You get the impression you can, but I don't think you can. Original was isometric. It's viewpoint in name only, really. Interesting. Oh, cool halo. It moves very slow. Oh, shit. This reminds me of some of like, there were some N64 games that I knew were just kind of, just games that were there. Nothing special, but I still like them, like Chopper Attack. Like something like that, like a Chopper Attack type game. Like stuff I may have rented maybe once or twice, but nothing, nothing overly special. Yeah, I have to open my controller tonight. You get the idea. It's it's cool. It's fine. It's uh, another little piece of lost media. But then, the thing I most wanted to see was this. Zelda 64 Map Showcase. Earlier this year, Forest of Illusion released a near-final build of Ocarina of Time as well as final prototype for F-Zero X. Unfortunately, F-Zero X, the same as the final, overwrote half the data. And that seems to be from a very early build of Zelda 64. The half we have contains text, textures, as well as entirety... as the entirety of map data. People who are working on a bigger showcase ROM that shows the maps as intended, but here's a version by uh, Z64Me, who did a quick insertion of those maps into a debug build of Ocarina of Time Master Quest. Okay, so I need to... hang on, I need to do something here. I need to enable a second control... Enable the uh oh uh, I need to enable the controller. Please wait a moment. Uh, almost done. Okay.
There's map select. I don't know what's happening. Nope. No, I don't. Don't know how to select the maps. It's frozen. Please, Luigi Blood, help me. Please. L R Z on um okay. I might have broke it. Broken. I might have broken it. Pressing start and it's not working. Oh, no wonder. Everything got unbound. That's phenomenal. The first controller got unbound entirely, and, uh... I guess I can't bind more than one? It's not sure. Okay. I think we got something. So, it's some kind of dungeon map? It, it's really just, um... Fast Dan? I don't know where the fuck we are. Or where this would have been. To manually click the doors to move to the next room. Oh, I see. Clearly, it's yeah, it's a fire dungeon of some kind. But Young Link does not have the ability to survive fire. Beta Ganon's castle, maybe. Okay, we're good now. I know how to select things. So this is the early Deku tree. <laughs> Gotta get that uh, nostalgia by listening to the music a little bit louder. Oh yeah, this is real crusty. This is very different. Doesn't have that big, like, um, spider pit. I mean, it's still vertical. Takes you. Huh. What the hell? Okay. Well, again, these maps were just inserted into Master Quests. So I just wrong warped. Mistakes were made. Early Dodongo. 
Okay. Yeah, I already see some differences. Rebind something, chat. Hang on. Good echo. We're not going to spend, like, too much time on each one, also because we're getting to the end of the stream-ish, and I still have one more. I was going to do the grab bag, uh, but instead, I will end with a really cool sandbox game that you may enjoy. But we're not going to be able to go through all of these dungeons and all of the maps, but we'll get a chance to look around a little bit, and if you know Ocarina of Time pretty well, you can already see what's different here. The whole main room is... Pretty different. Right, I keep trying to like swing the camera around. Um, it doesn't look like I can get anywhere anyway, so. Jabu Jabu test. Some intense echo. Vinny and Naval flying. Deep left D pad, right or huh? Use L and D-pad right for free movement. Oh, thanks. I see. Got it. Press B on level select before load to change Link's age. Alright. Ah! Early forest temple? Oh man. Whoa. Crusty Hyrule Castle. These colors are really weird too. It's just a smaller area, pretty much. Try that again. Stairs. <laughs> let's let's go in that way. Oh god, wrong. Wrong. Yeah, it's uh, brighter. A little bit more compact. Door? Hmm? That became an elevator. Cool music is in here. That's the most upsetting part. Whoa, tiny room. This room. <laughs> they just. This has got to be like 
Here's the idea. We'll go back and finish it later. You can't defeat Phantom Ganon in a room like this. What the hell? It's too small, man. I don't know what I keep doing. It's really kind of amazing how much this game changed. Like, they did not settle for mediocrity. Um, and then you look at, like, actual Zelda 64 maps, like, from 1996 previews, and it was basically Zelda 2 in 3D form with very rudimentary, basic, like, buildings and wide open street. I still think about that game. Sometimes my dreams confuse that for being a game that's just not out yet. Like, I still have to wait for that one to come out. The Hyrule field from that is in this. Okay, that's pretty cool. This is just empty. Happy face. There's, um... I mean, a general, um, design through line that carried on into the actual fire temple. There's the- here's the maze, for example. This maze is, like, a lot bigger. In the, uh, final version, I feel like this maze is bigger, but I don't know, it could be about the same thing. But yeah, it's really empty. Um, oh yeah, Link's knees have exploded thousands of times by now. It's- he's fine. He likes it. It's smaller in the final version. Water Temple. Someone said, if you thought Water Temple was bad on the final version, wait until you see it here. Hello, Link. I think that's the boss room. We, we might have to go backwards. The water goes real deep for the final boss pool. Vinny, isn't this where you told us about your cousin's club? It is. Yo, what the fuck? It's huge! This main room is like triple the size of the final game. Or more. Yeah, this is fucking massive. It's also very foggy. So it's hard to make out details. I will say the water temple actually kind of looks nice in Ocarina of Time. Like it's got the cool reflection effects and... It's bluish. It's fresh. It seems like they already knew what they were going to do with it. They just made it more compact. Which is the second time I've said that word this stream so far. But yeah, these, these hallways and rooms are just fucking massive. It's smart. I still don't really love the Water Temple. I think the 3DS version did a pretty good job at fixing it up, at least to make it a little bit less confusing. Um, but the boot switching was the most annoying part. Having access to boot switch, quick boot switch, is a godsend for that temple.
Training grounds in Dampy's Grave Race was originally one full location. like yeah, it's the Gerudo training ground um older Hyrule field this I'm very interested in oh my oh my god high crust field yeah this is a really early version Totally empty, too. It was smart to add a horse. Yep, there's one of those fucking buildings that I remember from like previews. That and there was like a forest with a Poe in it. I remember seeing that stuff. And the, the forest was just like six trees. The trees, rocks, signs, and fences were all lost in the overdump. Ah, yes, the overdump. I understand. But yeah, this is super early shit. Even the doors are like really basic and different. Interesting to me that there would have been maybe just like random houses on the overworld, because as much as I like Ocarina of Time's overworld, for what it did for gaming, like, at the time. I mean, it still is empty. The music. Newer Hyrule Field. Oh, this one's got music. Oh, there's the nostalgia. Fresh. Get it while it's here. That's a long fence leading to nowhere. Um, so that's not quite done. This was a demo map. They showed where guests could ride, use the horse to ride around the map. Cool. This was what they showed off at Space World. It's fucking awesome. It's still empty as fuck, but at least it looks a lot better. Um, and there's probably more direction on, like, like there's horse stuff that you can jump over. This probably was amazing to see in 1997, like how big this world was. I mean, it was amazing for me to see it when the game released finally. I, even then, in 1998, I was still kind of blown away by it. But if you're, like, at Space World and you're checking this out and, like, they're like, Hey, do you want to check out Zelda 64? Here's this big, vast, open field. Link looks massive. Oh boy. 
Oh, man. Wow. Yeah, this evolved a little bit. This is some Zelda 64 shit. He's fine. They gave it a lot more character. I mean, it makes sense that it's kind of a mountain town because it's on a mountain. Oh gosh. <laughs> Can't go in there to see the, uh, the Poe pimp. This, yeah, this kind of thing reminds me of Zelda 2. Like the old Zelda 2 graveyard. But again, they did a really good job at eventually taking this and turning it into something a lot more memorable. And not just, like, basic 3D whatever the fuck, like Quest 64. Sorry, Quest 64, you're always getting dunked on in comparison to Zelda, but we have no choice. Early Temple of Time. Nothing there. Lost Woods? Whoa. This looks quite a bit different. There's no wood. It's all mulch. <laughs> Where's the woods? I guess they're lost. This was a prototype for the fog effect. Well, this is also... Um... I was gonna say, that would have been something that I was hoping it was gonna be those six trees from that one screenshot. But not quite. Pretty much almost what it became. Hmm. Uh sound effects gone. Someone said this is actually an alpha version of the Deku tree. <laughs> Spooky. It's almost like at any moment you're gonna hear like a sound effect. When will you hear it? What will it be? Sacred Forest Meadow. Just some random temple. 
Again, a little bit of a Zelda 2 thing going on here. Generic house. And, uh... Massive Lake Hylia. Oh, it's frozen over. Okay. Hope you don't mind that I'm skipping around some of these maps at high speeds. I guess that other game I was going to play tonight just got shafted. There's still more maps I want to check out. Well, Grab Bag Gamble would have been fun. And, uh... The other game... Maybe I'll make time for it during the week, because it is a really cool little sandbox game. I think you'll enjoy it. But this is way too interesting. I can't... I just can't stop doing this now. I want to see some of these early maps. Early fishing pond. Okay, Gerudo Valley. Okay. Okay, there's like tents here and not... Oh, this isn't actually Gerudo Valley yet. It's like, kind of close to it, but not quite. I mean, yeah, technically it is, but sure. The Carpenter Camp. And now a shooting gallery! Horseback archery. Oh boy. Oh boy, is that crust. Whoa, what the fuck? <laughs> oh my god! It's adult Link voice. It's wrong. It's just wrong. All oh, right, child like can't use the bow, so it's just slingshot and error noise. <laughs> really interesting targets. Uh this this is actually in Gerudo Valley, so it's not supposed to be like you know, in the final version, it's the Gerudo Valley art, um, horseback archery. In this version, it seems to be just randomly in the middle of a field. God's net, I was strong then! <laughs> Open more in the field, Ned! Those racky horns! We saw this. This one's a little... A little cross-tacular. We liked it, though. Um, so we'll just move on to the next one. Death Mountain Trail. That's where the Gorons live. Just emptier, but... The general layout's about the same. Dongo's Cavern should be down here. And... It probably will take us to a shooting gallery instead of Dongo, but let's see. Okay, Wood World! And that's a crash.
Vinny, you missed stuff in Gerudo Valley. What did I miss? Go left this time, there was a desert. I see it. Okay. Just like sprite cactus. All right. see how much more there is. I think we can do all of these. We can. The other segments were shafted for a good cause. I mean, these were the two main features. Um, these are the ones that were definitely planned. I didn't think I was going to get this much time out of this segment. Then again, I guess I didn't count on how many maps there would be. It's like its own dungeon. Hmm. Cave. Just regular cave. Where would this have been, I wonder? always five rupees. What the fuck? It's a red X? You know that first cave that you have to go through in Skyrim? <laughs> Kinda reminds me of that. Whoa, not good. Someone in chat said that Cave B was the most interesting beta map yet. And I just don't know what that chat member is talking about. Cave C is so much better. I guess the, the geometry was just kind of interesting. Water frozen in time. Early unicorn fountain, perhaps? <laughs> Not supposed to be able to walk around here, but... Don't worry about it. <laughs> the 
this fucking music. Early Goma Cave. Oh, here's the prototype Deku Tree again, yeah. Stalfos A. Interesting room. Reminds me more of the Majora's Mask uh, iconic castle. Just a brighter version of it. Textureless scene. It is definitely that. Early room where the Stalfos was fought in the magazines. Oh, I remember that fucking Stalfos picture. I didn't remember the room, but... I, I kind of want to go back and see some of these screenshots now. <laughs> Ask and ye shall receive, chat. <laughs> this is what you wanted. You said chroma key, uh, the, the, the thing. Chroma key. Clearly this is what you... We got, we're going to the turtle temple. No? That was a rumor back in the day, the Turtle Temple. It was like how you got to the Unicorn Fountain. It's weird, being in this test room... ...just put me into a weird, like... You know, 25 years ago... ...into the, um... ...the mind of a programmer... ...on the Ocarina of Time team. Just trying to figure all this shit out for, like, the first time. It feels forbidden, but also, it's just... ...imagine... ...like, some of the meetings where they were on this map... ...and they were just testing out different things and looking around and trying to figure out how to make the ladders work as good as they could. It's really... ...interesting. I kind of wish I could be a fly on the wall sometimes and see that. It's like, you know, you want to be a fly on the wall to see your favorite album albums get made. That too, but also maybe my favorite games. Yeah, it's the ballroom. I guess. Vinny, you wouldn't be able to understand them. I understand that, but check this out. If I have the power to magically go back in time and become a fly on the wall in the development room of Nintendo, I will also grant myself the power to understand Japanese. Oh, this is... Yep, it, this crashed, and it, as it has done just now. Someone squishes you within seconds of becoming said fly. I will spawn more. The fly uh, collective, there is no stopping us. Resistance is futile. Oh boy. Um, well this... ...kinda reminds me of Dark Link's battle. Ah! 
Whoa, that was actually kind of frightening. <laughs> Sound effects gone. Oh, you can see the tiles now. Yep. Well, that pretty much concludes the um, prototype stream, I think. But what the fuck was that? <laughs> okay. <laughs> Yeah, I was going to say, maybe you can give yourself infinite things. You missed a huge section in the Beta Deku Tree. Which one? This one? Because there were a couple. I mean, we can take a quick look. It's huge. But a lot of rooms just look like this. You can check out the areas you couldn't reach in Dodongo. That's too much of a deep dive, I think. Even here, I don't know which rooms would be the most interesting to go into. I mean, we can fly around and look, but... This is also end of stream voice, so... Well, this is an interesting room. Well, I think we found one of the, um, the more interesting sections of the Deku Tree. winds around this main thing. So instead of it being um, a big hole in the center of the map, this is you climb the middle. giant hollow tree versus a tree with another little tree in it. Take your pick. I guess there would have been like a, a bunch of enemies and some puzzles, right? I mean, that's what Zelda is. Big open spaces with some enemies and some puzzles. But, um... They only got as far as making the open space... until the revision, which I think is actually probably for the best. Um, I think the Deku Tree is a great first dungeon. It teaches you pretty much everything you need to know about how to, like, approach the basic idea of a dungeon in Zelda 64. Sorry, Ocarina of Time. And, uh, it also... It also kind of has a good little spooky atmosphere. draws you into the world a little bit more, too. It's just a really good dungeon. I think it's one of the... best starting dungeons in the whole series. And the verticality of it, too, because you're going, like, you know, all the way to the top, and then you have to find a way to get through that spider web. It teaches you... how to do the, uh, multi-level Zelda-ing that the previous games only were able to kind of simulate in 2D. I wonder if up here... Uh, King Babam would be, and you could throw him off. Alright. 
wrong graphic. Okay. Well, I hope you enjoyed that proto, excuse me, prototype pack as much as I did. That was a lot of interesting stuff. I love that shit. <clears throat> I love video game archaeology. My voice is kind of tired and giving up. It's failing. So this is a good time to end the stream. Uh, the shafted segments will make an appearance. The sandboxy game, I won't tell you what it is right now, but let's just say it's good. It's cool. I think you'll enjoy it. And I'll either do that next week or during the week. But uh, thank you so much, Vinny. Archaeology and not geology. Okay. All right. Well, listen. I'm aware. Germa was corrected. He got the shirts made. It said archaeology. In this case, I think it is archaeology. Just saying. My shirts will be good. I'll take his shirts. I'll use them and I'll sell them for... Anyway. Um, let's take a look at the art. 